for a fresh new day. I can't believe I just saw a few more inches of snow outside while we were sleeping. Man, Carlos, I'm jealous. Yeah, yeah, I know you got your thumbs up in North Carolina. Sly dog, yeah. <laughs> anyway, just want to welcome the men, welcome the new men on the on the Zoom for the first time. Um, yeah, we always have new guys entering in from all around the country every week, which is a blessing. Uh, love to show them the website real quick, Sonny, if we could do that. Um, Guys within Men's Discipleship Network, who's ever jumping on maybe for the first time, we have a section of resources that you could chime into, and you could actually go to resources, a new kind of man Bible study, and you could catch up on months worth of Thursday morning studies we've done. So keep that in mind. Uh, there he goes. Thank you, brother, for putting it up. Resources, a new kind of man study, and you could dive right in there and help yourself to whatever we've been in for months and months is in there. So you got yourself pre-done studies that you can start your day with, start your week with. So that's a real blessing. And whoever, again, is on for the first time new, we utilize the chat box. If God is speaking to you through this message, please share in the chat box what God's given you. Even if you have any questions towards the end, we'll try to approach it all. And um, this past week, we had a great week couple anchor scriptures, 1 Corinthians 13, 4 to 7, and 11, the, the, the love verses of the Bible, basically. We were in Isaiah 55, and I'm going to put them in the chat box in Psalm 63. Um, basically, we touched on uh, when we become men, and maturity and love is synonymous with biblical manhood, and that's what we covered the whole morning on. It was a real blessing, and um, today we have a treat, guys. We got a guest uh who's not only a great friend brother to the ministry he's an amazing pastor he's a, he he has a heart for the men and um we've really become great friends over the years and i'm i can't wait to see what he's bringing to the table so i'd like to intro uh, pastor gary petrillo come on board brother thank you good morning gentlemen glad to be here with you this morning and I want to applaud you for uh, coming on. Uh, 36 of us, at least at this point, at uh, 7 a.m., some of you even earlier than that. It's not easy in this uh, society we live in to get up early and to set time aside uh, to study the Word of God, to worship the Lord, to come together uh, with your brothers. So uh, welcome. Glad you're here. And uh, I'm looking at my calendar and I'm saying, all right, well, we're about six weeks in uh, to this new year, 2021. And uh, as Joe mentioned, we got more snow on the ground here, uh, at least in the Northeast. So depending on where you're zooming from um, and depending on whether or not you like snow and the cold uh, will determine maybe how you're waking up this morning and how you feel about your day, uh, perhaps. Uh, although I don't live down south, but I have my Orlando, Florida sweatshirt on, so I feel a little warmer uh, just because of that this morning. Uh, this year is already uh, begun, 2021, and it may seem like we're deep into it, but it really just started. And I want to encourage you this morning, uh, this year, God has great things in store for your life, great things in store for your family. And this year, uh, there are treasures that he wants to reveal for your life. I heard a story a couple of weeks ago in the news about a man in another country who was speaking to the municipalities because a few years back, he had thrown out his computer. And what he didn't know at the time was that Bitcoin was going to increase in value dramatically. And the amount of Bitcoin he had on his old computer that he threw out was now worth millions and millions and millions of dollars. And so he told his local municipality, if you would allow me to go into the landfill and dig up my old computer, I will give you $300 million of that Bitcoin money. And they refused to allow him to do it 
because of what they consider to be the environmental impact of trying to search for this computer. And so here is a treasure that is buried that he has no access to. But there is a treasure that we have that although it may be covered, we have access to it uh, through Jesus Christ. And remember that parable that Jesus told when there was a man who found treasure in a field, he buried it again so that he can go home, sell all that he had, buy that land, and it would rightfully be his. Well, the Lord has already purchased the price, and that purpose he has to your life um, was already created in you and for you. And although it's a free gift, there is a receiving of it, which may require a little digging. And uh, I've heard it said before, salvation is free, but it will cost you everything. And so there's this idea that there's a leaving behind the past and a pressing forward into what God has for us. And so 2021 can be very different than 2020, depending on whether or not we acknowledge there's a treasure that God wants us to possess, and we're willing to do a little digging uh, to, to actually apply it to our lives. Uh, I looked up some things about 2020. I said, you know, there, there has to be some good things that came out of 2020. Let me, you know, look on the internet and see what are the achievements, what are positive things. Well, if you're a Christian, for the most part, there's really not a lot that you would agree was so wonderful in 2020, especially with COVID and, and, and all the political and, and, and racial unrest and divide uh, in this country. In fact, the only thing I can find that maybe we'd all agree is, you know, maybe a good thing was the advancement in space exploration that took place in 2020. And I find it a little funny that the number one thing we did that was good in 2020 was trying to figure out how to get off this planet and how to get out of here. That's how bad things were in 2020. But 2021 21 really has just started. And so today I want to talk to you about this, um, this concept of not giving up before you've even really gotten started. And, you know, the end of 2020, there were those who said, you know what, I'd rather this year just be completely over. Well, most who had that attitude and, and, and who kind of focused on that, if I had to guess, they're probably not too happy about 2021 either and these first six weeks. And so we've just started. It's just begun. And so the enemy would like to get us to give up before we've ever really taken off. And I want to encourage you not to do that today. And so there are uh, three things I want to tell you today, really based on the life of David. And the first one is that in 2021, God wants you to believe in the calling that he has on your life. Believe in your calling. Believe that he has called you. Believe that he has chosen you. Believe that he has set you apart. Believe that he has a purpose for your life and for your family. Believe in your calling. Other people can believe in your calling. But if you don't believe in your calling, it's never going to come to pass. And yet at the same time, you could be surrounded by some people who don't believe in your calling. But if you believe in your calling and you are faithful to what God has told you to do, that calling will come to pass in your life. And so it's vital that you, as a man, believe in the calling God has over your life. You and I have to make a choice every day to believe with our entire life that God will do everything he said that he will do. Believing in our calling. And I'm reminded of David when he was anointed in 1 Samuel chapter 16, you know the story well. You know, David to me is, is probably, other than Jesus, the greatest 
person to study uh, from the Bible. Who, who else do we have detailed stories about with not only the stories of their life, but through the book of Psalms, we have their thought process and their emotions while they're going through these experiences in great detail from them, their own mouths. And so there's a lot we can learn from the life of David. And when Samuel in verse six of first Samuel 16, uh, when he uh, uh, stands uh, before Jesse and the sons, what does the Lord say to Samuel? Don't consider his appearance or his height for I have rejected him. The Lord does not look at the things people look at. People look at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Then Jesse called the sons, and what happened? Each one passed. They were not the ones. But verse 10 says that the seven sons passed, and Samuel said, the Lord has not chosen these. So he asked Jesse, are these all the sons you have? There is still the youngest, Jesse answered. He is tending the sheep. So it seems that nobody in Jesse's family even thought of the possibility that their youngest could be chosen by God. And maybe you feel that way by some of the people that have surrounded you over the years. But David, could you imagine him going through all that he went through in his life without believing in his calling? I think probably the reason he was able to go through the life he went through was because he knew that there was a calling over his life. And so the Bible says that Samuel waited and sat down until he arrived. And they sent for him, brought him, glowing health, fine appearance, handsome features. And the Lord said, rise and anoint him. This is the one. So Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And from that day on, the spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon David. Samuel then went to Ramah. And so this morning, that anointing, that calling that God has on your life is one that you look back on and you look to no matter what you're going through in life. And you remember that God who has called you is faithful. God who has called you is faithful. And so people who have a conviction of their calling live life very differently than people who do not have that conviction of their calling. And so in 2021, if you're not believing in the calling God has on your life, you may want to treat it just like 2020. Can I tell you that in 2020, as bad as it was, um, there are some great things that God did in my own life personally. There are some great things that God did in our family, in our church, 25 years of ministry. And in the middle of COVID, for the first time, we purchased our own building location in 2021, um, in 2020, right? And so the Lord was working in 2020. Um, we started partnering with Brooklyn Teen Challenge, who come to House on the Rock Church right now, and who are living in the Rockaways with us right now. And they're using a, a house that belongs to our family in Rockaway right now. And I spoke to Pastor Levi and the other men in our church, and I said, you know, during this pandemic, where everyone is isolated, where everyone is alone, God has blessed us with 30, 40 men to be a part of our lives as friends and as brothers in Christ. I got to tell you, I, I was blessed in 2020. And so we go forward into 2021, no matter what things may look like on the outside, but if we know that we are called, we live life on a whole different level than the way the rest of the world lives life. And so number two this morning, other than believing in your calling, it is so important, men, that we win the battles right where we are. We win the battles right where we are. You know, you hear that phrase in military terms, take the hill. 
because we know that the high ground is the best ground to be fighting from. It's easier to defend. So we have this idea in our minds that we want to take the hill. But I got news for you. You can't take the hill if you haven't taken the valley. You can't take the hill if you haven't taken the valley. If you're unable to win the battles at eye level that are right around you, you're not going to be able to fight against things that have a great advantage that are coming against you. It's important to win the battles right where you are. And so in 2021, you don't have to worry about that other location or that other family or that other ministry or that other job at work that's not yours to do. You have to win the battles right where God has put you, right where you are. And I think again about David in 1 Samuel chapter 17. David said to Saul, your servant was tending his father's sheep when a lion and a bear came and took the sheep from the flock. I went out after it and attacked it and rescued the sheep from its mouth. And when it rose up against me, I grabbed it by its mane and struck it and killed it. Your servant has killed both the lion and the bear. So here he is before fighting Goliath, letting King Saul know that he first fought the bear and the lion where he was as a shepherd in order to protect the sheep. And a lot of us want to fight the giant, but we haven't first fought and defeated the lions and the bears that have tried to steal right from where we're at. And so I want to encourage you this morning, fight the battles right where you are. And as you do that, God, who's going to win the victory in your lives, is going to advance the battle forward. And you're going to find even bigger challenges that God is going to help you to overcome. You're going to find different people that God is going to help you to win battles with and for uh, different causes, especially the cause of Jesus, which is the most important. And so what happened after he first won the battles where he was, he then seems to have advanced a level. And here now he is, he's about to fight this giant because at this point, that's where he was. He was sent to bring supplies to his brothers. And after doing that from time to time and hearing this giant speaking and mocking God, he took a stand where he was. And the Bible says, right, as that Philistine moved closer to attack him in verse 48, David ran quickly toward the battle line to meet him. Reaching into his bag and taking out a stone, he slung it and struck the Philistine on the forehead. The stone sank into his forehead and he fell face down on the ground. So David triumphed over the Philistine with a sling and a stone without a sword in his hand. He struck down the Philistine and killed him. And then later on in life, David's being used to defeat thousands of people. We read in 1 Samuel 18, 7, they, the people would dance, they would sing. Saul has slain his thousands and David his tens of thousands. And you see a progression in the life of David because wherever he was, that's where he focused on the battles that needed to be won. So where are you today in 2021? Where are you this week? Where is your family right now? What's going on with your job right now? What is surrounding you that as you focus on your calling and you're confident in that, you can go forward and win the battles that are surrounding you today? And then the third and last point today is in all things, big and small, even really small, 
in all things big and small, honor God. Honor God in all things big and small. If you want 2021 to be different, then it's important that you know your calling, that you fight the battles that God has called you to fight right where you are, and that in all things big and small, you are honoring God. And so uh, God refers to uh, David through scripture as a man after his own heart, a man after his own heart. Um, and, I, and I think about how David honored God, not only when he's fighting a giant, not only when he's fighting lions and bears, not only when he's fighting armies, but even after Saul is out of the picture and David could have come in and completely wiped out all of Saul's family, which most kings, that would be their mentality. Instead, he even looks to take care of Saul's family. So we read that in 2 Samuel 9, 7, David said to him, fear not, for I will surely show thee kindness for Jonathan, thy father's sake, and will restore thee all the land of Saul, thy father, and thou shalt eat bread at my table continually. And so the Bible says he restored all of Saul's land to his grandson, Mephibosheth, with Saul having been king. And if you think about it, if Saul is your relative, and you own land, it probably was a substantial amount of land. It probably was not a cheap piece of land. And yet David's kindness in honoring God in big things and small things caused him to even bless someone in a way that was sacrificial, in a way that was uh, not maybe the way the world would do it, but the way God would have him to do it. And so in what areas of our lives in 2021 do we need to make sure that we are honoring God? Maybe there's things right now that God is putting on your heart that you know have not been God honoring. And you may think, well, that's a small area. Haven't you learned, man of God? that small things lead to big things? Haven't you learned, man of God, that as the Bible says, it's the foxes, the smaller animals that spoil the vines? There needs to be an honoring God, not just in the sanctuary, but an honoring God in the home that you live in, and honoring God in your, in your physical body, and honoring God in the words that you speak and honoring God in the thoughts you allow your mind to entertain day in and day out. And so this morning, believe in the calling God has on your life. I know Pastor Scott, who leads this ministry, the reason why he does it year in and year out is because he believes that God is still calling men in 2021 to great things. Trust me, he would not do this if he did not believe that God has a calling on the lives of every single one of the men that are on this call right now, all 44 of you. The ministry of Men's Discipleship Network to train the, 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 the men, millions of men in the word of God, uh, the church, being able to, to, to establish a ministry amongst men because we know and we're learning that that is going to be the single greatest impact in the world is men's ministry. Um, you have people fighting for you, believing in you, encouraging you. And as much as that is good and important, if you don't believe it, it's going to be very hard to see it. And so this morning, our prayer for you 
is that the Lord would reveal through his word, through his spirit, through counsel of Pastor Scott, the calling that God has on your life. No matter what you've done, no matter where you've been, no matter how bad things look right this moment, God has a mighty calling on you, on you, not just Pastor Scott or Pastor Gary or other pastors or leaders or brothers that are in the box to the left or right or above you or beneath you. He has a calling for you. And God wants you to walk in that calling and win the battles that are right where you are. You know, men have a tendency to say, well, if I was leading, I would do better because I would do this and I would do that. And most men who think that way will never be a leader. And if they were a leader, the truth is things would probably fall apart. Win the battle right where you are. You don't have to worry about what Pastor Gary is doing or Pastor Scott is doing. You have to worry about what you are doing. You have to win the battle right where you are, even in your family. Some of you are so concerned about your spouse, and that could be good, but not if you're deflecting the battle that needs to be won first in you. And the greatest likelihood of success for your spouse and your children is going to be the victory that you have in Jesus first in your own life. And then in 2021, man, you can honor God in public, but if you dishonor him in private, it's going to be very hard to see a change in 2021. This is a, a year where the Lord is certainly setting people apart for himself. We're living in our world right now where the trajectory in this country is one that there's not going to be any middle ground. There's either going to be good or there's going to be evil. It's going to be very hard, if not impossible, to walk somehow right down the middle. And so there's a year ahead of us of setting apart, a year ahead of us of choosing are we going to be holy as God is holy, or are we going to have a form of godliness while at the heart completely rejecting God? And it starts with the smaller areas often in our lives. And so again, in the same way that no matter what you've done and no matter where you've been and no matter how bad things are today, God still has a calling. God can still do mighty victories in battles in your life. In the same way, he can help you to honor him today in ways that you dishonored him yesterday. There can be a shift. There can be a turning. There can be a change. And it's the power of God. It's the word of God. It's the Holy Spirit at work through men who say, humbly before him, I cannot do this on my own. I need more of you, Jesus, in my life. And holding themselves accountable to good godly counsel that's around them through ministries like Men's Discipleship Network. And so I'm believing with Pastor Scott that 2021 is going to be a year that MDN is going to say, you know what? There was a real shift in the ministry because there was a shift in the men who come out and participate in the ministry. There was a shift in their family, a shift in their local church, a shift in their community because of Jesus and them not giving up before they even got started, but them going into the rest of 2021, which you still have 90% more of, and having that focus 
and that determination and that heart to see God glorified in their life. I'll, I'll end with this. A lot, uh, there's a group of you that aren't in New York City, but New York, there's a lot of people giving up. A lot of Christians have given up on New York. I'm getting calls almost weekly from friends, family, church members saying, I'm out of here. I'm out of here. And I don't blame them in, in many ways. I don't blame them. But New York City desperately needs a bright light to be shown. And I imagine that your town, your city needs that as well. In fact, sometimes it's those smaller towns that were surprised they're doing things and saying things that are way off. And we expected it to be different than the big city. And so there is a desperate need for hope in our cities and in our towns. And God strategically has placed us there to be that light. And light shines its brightest in the darkest of places. So don't be discouraged with the way things are going, especially if the way things are going in here are exactly the way God has called you to walk in. I love you guys. Uh, Lord, I pray for every man that's on this call right now. Oh, Jesus. I don't know everyone. Pastor Scott probably knows almost everyone. But Lord, you know every detail and every emotion, every thought, every aspect of the past, everything that's going on at the moment, and everything you are destining them for in the future. You know all things infinitely, perfectly. And with your full wisdom, you're still saying, come to me. You're still cheering us on. You're still interceding on our behalf. With all of our errors, you're still speaking to us. You're still in the middle of the noise trying to get our attention. And Lord, you desire for us to turn around from whatever it is that we're doing that is not of you and to come back to, to you. Come back to the fold. Come back home. Come back to your will. And so, Lord, as we turn from our sin, we turn to you. As we turn to you, we turn from our sin. We pray that there'd be a real 180 this morning in our hearts and in our minds, in our physical bodies, in our way of speaking, in the tone of the words that come out of our mouths to our families. Lord, we pray right now and we commit to turning towards your face this morning in a greater way than yesterday because we know as proud as we can be that we're in desperate need. We're in desperate times and in desperate times we need a savior and you are that savior. So we ask Lord that you would help us to be so confident in the calling you have over us, we wouldn't be easily distracted. We wouldn't be easily set back. We wouldn't be easily entangled in the sin and the affairs of this world, but we would have a singularity of focus that wants to see your will done in our lives. And we pray, Lord, that the battles that are right around us that we haven't even been engaged in, we would take up our sword this morning and we would begin to fight the good fight of faith right around us, right in our family, right in our own hearts, right in our own circle of influence that you have put us in. And we pray, Lord, that you would help us not to think so far into the future or so far into, into uh, what we'd like to do next that we're not being any good in the moment that we're in right now. And Lord, we pray 
that in all these things that would be done to honor you, our captain, you are king, you are savior, you the lover of our soul. We want to glorify and honor you in all things. And we pray that you'd help us to do that better today. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. What a what a glorious word. Carlos, if you're there, I'll turn it over to you. I am here. I'm here. And uh, Pastor Gary, again, thank you for a fantastic, fantastic message. Uh, wonderful words of encouragement. Uh, wow. That's normally what it is. those three points uh, are, are items to focus on, to actually focus on. And, uh, you know, the, the last one where you mentioned and said, in all things, big and small, honor God. And I think of First Thessalonians where he says, uh, pray without ceasing, give thanks always in everything. And it has always stayed with me and uh, just a powerful, powerful morning. And, um, Man, I hope you received like I did uh, this morning. But my task this morning is to take up the offering. I'm honored and it's a privilege to uh, take up an offering for the ministry. Uh, it is a blessing. It's a blessing each and every morning that we hear and we hear the words, uh, uh, you know, uh, from God, you know, through through the pastor, through uh, Pastor Scott. And um you know, I just want to say one thing, because one thing that really was pinpointed this morning for men that you, we're a parachurch, and uh, the message is, I don't want to say it the wrong way, but pinpointed toward men, encouraging men uh, to be all you can be, uh, you know, for Jesus Christ. I know we go to church. And, uh, and I know our families go to church and, and, and we hear messages, but here at Men's Discipleship, Mess, uh, Men's Discipleship Network, uh, the message is, is pinpointed for you, each man sitting in that seat. And I hope you receive it that way. Okay, so first, you know, second, I wanna thank each and every man that's here, uh, that is uh, with us each Thursday. We're a 501c3 uh, corporation. And um, we thank you. We thank you each each of you. So if you look on the screen, you'll see uh, three different ways that we describe to give. Uh, the number, the text. Yeah, you yeah, see that number, 833-500-4685. You can text the word give and follow the instructions. You can go to mendiscipleshipnetwork.com. You'll see a donate button. You follow that instruction. And lastly, you can also write a check to Men's Discipleship Network. And you see the address at the bottom. And um, following this uh, wonderful, following this wonderful message, you will receive an email, and that summarizes the various ways of giving. So, uh, and I hope you don't take it for granted. As, as Coach said earlier, uh, Coach Joe Magri, th there's the the website, and available to each man are the lessons. I mean, you know, it's not just this morning, but you can go back and, and read the lessons from previous weeks, previous months, all right? So it's a blessing. And I want to just leave it, leave it at that. And again, thank you, Pastor Gary. And I'll turn it back over to Coach Joe. Thank you, brother. Appreciate that. Wow, what, a, what an amazing word. What a, in due season, too, because, I mean... Some of the brothers I've been speaking with the last couple of weeks, this was such a, a, a perfect timed word, Pastor, I could tell you, because this past